Hello, this is Mike Lyman, and today I'm going to show you how to control the wheels of a vehicle in a way 3D. So let's click on the example. So click on this button and control it with your arrow key. So click on that. And if you hit the up key, you roll forward and your wheels are rolling. See the wheels roll? And if you hit the side key, your wheels actually turn. And that's exactly what you want to do. And you actually can hold two keys at the same time, our side key and up key. And you can see I'm doing little wheelies. Woohoo! How fun to do! Now this particular example is not completely set up to uh, do an entire program. I do have some scaling here, so I can scale up and down uh, the screen. So it looks like I'm actually on a plane, but I actually just use some scaling rules to actually do that with. So I have some scaling rules here. Uh, but uh, all I really want to do in this video is basically show you how to control these wheels in a way 3D. And it's not necessarily transparent. You'll be thankful for me giving you the code. I actually show you how to do this with paper vision in my book, so let's open that up real quick. So in chapter 5 of my book, I actually draw a little Barney car. Let me go up and show you that. So I do this in 3DS Max, and I build the body and the wheels. And then I give them names in the Carlotta file. So when I, so when I built this in 3DS Max, I actually gave them some names. So if you don't know the names of the Carlotta file, you have to go and pull those out so you actually know uh, what to reference. So don't be afraid of Carlotta files. Just get used to opening them up and reading them, and eventually they'll start to make sense to you. And so let's go back to our example here, and we're going to show you how to, uh, let's reset to put our car back where it was. And we're going to show you how to build this in uh, a way 3D. So I'm actually in the code right now, and I use a Flash Build, and I use Design View because I really like to access data. So I'm in the Creation Complete method. That's when the application is built, it runs the first method, which is Initiate App. And I actually have four methods that I run and a little button method. So the methods I run are initiate the way 3D that gets the way 3D engine running, initiate materials, create model, initiate listeners. And I have a little Boolean method here. I'm turning the visibility of my buttons on and off as I click them. So let's take a look at initiate materials. Now in order to do your materials, what I do in this particular program is actually just go ahead and embed everything. The images, I have the body image, the tread image, and the wheel image, and then the uh, DAE file I embed itself. So they come out real fast. Now you don't have to do that. You can load these models dynamically. I just did that for this particular example. Once again, you can get all this code on my blog, professionalpapervision.wordpress.com. So let's go down. And so the first thing I do is, uh, after initiating the away 3 d light, I initiate the materials. And I use that famous cast bitmap method that confuses all the paper vision guys. And I'm pretty much just taking the bitmap, I embed it, and turning it into material that I actually put on my Colada file. So the next method I run is basically create model. And I'm basically taking a Colada file. And I'm scaling a little scaling here, and I'm parsing the geometry. And this is key. You want to take this geometry as it parses, it actually throws it into the model in terms of children. And I'm going to index those children. So as opposed to using the names as I did in chapter five of my book for paper vision, I'm actually going to just I'm actually going to grab the model pieces through index number. Now I've already showed this in a previous video, so I'm actually throwing materials on the particular elements in the Carlotta file. So I didn't know the names of these files. I actually actually I actually had to open up the Carlotta file and read them, and then I knew what uh, pieces I need to throw the different materials onto. So you can learn all that from opening up the Carlotta file. Now. Here's the key to controlling your wheels. You've got to grab the wheels that have been parsed by index number. Now, how do you know those index numbers? Basically, just open it up and start playing around with them. Now, here's my wheel rotation. Now, this particular model was not quite right, so I actually had to go in the Collada file and actually reprogram it. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the Collada file real quick here. So once again, thanks to ADL, that's Advanced Distributed Learning, for giving us these models. And I actually was testing them to see how well they'd work in uh, Way 3D. And actually, they work real well. These models about 1,500 polygons, and they just rock. So this is the particular uh, Humvee model. Let's go to Humvee folder. Let's click on that, and you want to open up that Carlotta file. Click on that. And you folks, you just want to start reading these and getting used to reading Carlotta files. They're not hard. They're organized in terms of libraries. You typically have a material library where you actually have your material names. and so. So here's my materials library, and this is where I get my materials name right here. So just look for materials library where you can grab your materials. What I'm interested in, though, is the location of the wheels and the basically the rotation of the wheels. So I go all the way to the bottom, and there's another library. And that library is called the Visual Scenes Library. And if you scroll down there, you should be able to find the wheels, and there's the wheel names right there. So the different geometries of this uh, Colada file are actually being parsed as you work through it. And of course, the error that I had, I had to go in and reprogram this particular program, was in the actual rotation node itself. So I actually had to go in there and actually reprogram some of the rotation. So uh, that's uh, pretty much, you've got to get familiar with these Carlotta files. When they're broken, 
you got to learn how to go inside and fix them. And uh, the more you know about working with them, the easier life is going to be. And uh, you can see basically you can have your translation that puts the wheel where it's supposed to be. And here's a matrix that basically orients the wheel where it's supposed to orient. And how do I know all that? Basically, when I work with a cloud file, I'll just go in and change some of the numbers and see what it does to the model. And that helps me figure out how to work with the cloud file. Now, that's pretty much just experiential based. Uh, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So now we looked at our cloud file. Let us see what it takes to make these wheels roll. So in order to make these wheels roll, I created this little wheel method, uh, or roll wheels. And what I want to do is access the geometry by index name. So look, I'm looking at index 1, 2, 3, 4. So it turns out that index 1 is my front left wheel, and index 3, my front right wheel, index 2, my rear left wheel, and index 4, my rear uh, right wheel. Now how did I know that? I just basically went in and started changing the numbers and saw which wheel rolled. And uh, then I figured out what the indexes were. So I'm sorry I'm not impressing with my intelligence, but I like to program quickly. So as opposed to going to a book and doing a lot of studying, I'll just change some parameters and numbers and figure out how to do that. Now let's roll over this get objects method that I've created and see what it does. Here it is right here. And here's the key to making wheels roll. You've got to access the mesh method in a way 3D. So what I do here is I create this get objects. I give it a wheel number which accesses the geometry child. And what I do is I use the mess method, and I throw in that an object container 3D. I have my model. I get the child by name and child zero because I've actually just there's just one child in that particular uh, array, and that first child is actually the model that you're trying to access. So let's go over that one more time. I've got my model that I've parsed its geometry. I'm accessing the child by index, and I'm using the zeroth child because that's the first element. I gotta take that and turn it into an object 3D container, and I have to use my mesh element to return that. So I'm actually doing a manipulation on its uh, uh, parameters. So once I have that, I return that to the objects. I basically do a dot rotation in Y. Now typically you'd think it'd be an X, but in this particular model it was messed up a little bit, so I actually re had to reprogram it, and so it actually turns out to be Y. And to turn the wheels, you need Z. So this this rolls the wheels. And notice I got a little mess up here with the signs plus plus minus minus you'd expect just the opposite just all pluses or all minuses but because I had to go and reprogram the Carlotta I had to do a little bit of hacking so when you actually do your wheel rolled uh, you may have all pluses or all minuses I had to use negative positive because I had to reprogram the Carlotta file I didn't want to mess it with it too much so I just went and hacked it and it worked fine now in order to steer the wheels you use some similar code so here's my steering mechanism right here and once again I'm just gonna get the object so it's one and three are the front wheels and so basically I'm steer plus or minus here because once again the cloud file was messed up and to reprogram it so I have a little hacking of numbers here once again just play around don't be afraid I'm actually gonna not let my wheel steer beyond 60 degrees and so whenever I steer basically I just change the Z rotation and all of that pretty much was just looking at the cloud file and playing around with the numbers a little bit and doing some reprogramming so just to recap things really quickly in order to make wheels move all you have to do is is grab the uh, children by index number and use the mesh object right here to, to turn that into an object container that you can actually turn and manipulate it. So once again, just go ahead and go to my blog and grab this code. I've, went ahead, I've posted it. And good luck with uh, controlling cars in a way 3D. Woohoo! I could just do this all day long. Hey, thanks for listening. I hope this helps. And I'll see you next time. This was Mike Lively.